it's really important uh, sectors in the design and fashion industry. And in this specific case, we're going to focus on the leather sector. Uh, before going into detail, I would like to give the floor to the person who perhaps best embodies this reality, uh, the reality of tanning. Um, although he needs no introduction, allow me to give the floor to Mr. Gustavo Gonzalez Quijano, Secretary General at Cotans. Gustavo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Francesca, and uh, welcome to everybody to this uh, uh, World 2 session dedicated to leather and uh, how to take advantage of this program for in, in the leather sector. So let me start first maybe to give a, you a few ideas about uh, uh, the leather sector. Some of you are in the leather sector and this is going to be a repetition for you, but uh, uh, maybe there are other people participating who who do not know yet uh, the leather industry in Europe and a few figures are, are always worthwhile hearing. So it's, uh, um, it's a sector that comprises 1,600 companies in, in Europe. Half of it uh, are probably in, it, in Italy. Um, the employment is uh, across Europe 34,000 people, more or less, and it generates a turnover of 7 billion euros every year. What's important is that uh, these 7 billion euros uh, are generating downstream of the leather sector about 125 billion dollars worldwide um, and creating uh, a lot of jobs, that is about 2 million jobs in 40,000 uh, uh, enterprises. So it's, it's really a, a sector that, that is worthwhile because it is uh, um, uh, um, uh, an industry that embodies the circular economy. It takes uh, uh, the skins that come from the as a as a byproduct from the from the meat industry, and it transforms it into a beautiful and uh, uh, very versatile material. Now, um, and that is used, of course, in in many in many areas of of uh, of our of our life. Uh, we are going to be looking into innovative ways of using leather and innovation in leather. And innovation in the leather industry has been um, a new and innovative tanning method that uh, you would like to, to take uh, advantage of for and, uh, and use in, in new products. There are uh, very interesting new vegetable tannins that, uh, that are interesting and that our tanneries are, are using. You can tan with rhubarba, with tara uh, fruits. Uh, you can tan with the extract of olive leaves, which is a, a very innovative way to, to do so. Or you can, you can also extract tanning, uh, tanning uh, agents from the kernels of grapes that would make wine leather. So there are many possibilities in innovating uh, uh, products uh, for the market thanks to tanning, new tanning methods. There are also new materials that are popping up in the market, real leather made from salmon uh, skins, from perch, Nile perch uh, uh, skins, or even others. But we have seen that in the first uh, uh, worth uh, uh, edition, um, and you will, you will hear later on um, uh, in a presentation, uh, that uh, uh, even stomach skins are, have, are, are being used. But Think also of uh, um, new innovative ways to use, for instance, the skin of the feet of, of uh, chicken, or um, that are, that can, you, you use ostrich skins for doing so, uh, why not chicken? Or uh, use, uh, uh, you can use also the, the, the skins of animals that are currently used, but are not necessarily taken advantage of, for instance, the tail of a bovine, why not? Using the tail, the, the skin of the tail of a bovine, which is lost at all. So it's, it, could be, it could be a very interesting way to re reinvent and uh, reuse uh, uh, things that would normal be, normally be, be uh, wasted. Um, new applications also in the leather sector. You can use leather for medical applications, for new technical materials, functional materials that are used in the digital uh, area. Uh, there are also new applications that could be found in sports or fashion. So 
it's a it's it's very interesting because the leather has properties that uh, um, improve the, uh, the 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 health and safety of of, of workers uh, and uh, of uh, the health and safety of uh, of um, sporting people of uh, in, the people in sports think of the the leather that is used for racing in motorbikes now uh, there are also in a, there is also innovation quite a lot of innovation in business models um, we need to find new solutions to the waste that the leather industry is producing um, sheepskin tanneries produce quite a lot of wool that is that is has finds it difficult to be put on the market that would be the reuse of something that is normally wasted, but that can produce quite interesting felts and new materials that could be used and would be at a zero allocation cost because it's a, it's a waste that, that the designers would be using. It would be an interesting way to, to reuse something that is, uh, that is normally wasted. Um, also, some, some big brands give us uh, indications about what can be done. Um, Hermes, the famous uh, uh, luxury brand, uses, uh, has, has de developed something that they use, their, they use their cutting waste in producing small articles. It's called Petit Hermes. And that is uh, put on the market for, uh, I don't know, some, some key holders or, or things like that, so that nothing gets wasted from a very interesting material. Louis Vuitton, for instance, also has uh, uh, made a new initiative last year and is using their, their, their dormant stocks. They, they call it les belles endormies. Uh, so their stocks that are not, has not been used in order to, that they give it for free, not for free, for a third of the, of the cost um, to, to designers for using, for developing new, um, new products. Um, and uh, uh, currently, they are also working uh, with uh, uh, an, another company for using their wasters, their waste textile, or their waste, uh, uh, their cutting wasters for, from from their products in leather, also for new products. So you see that there are lots of possibilities uh, for for innovating in the industry, and uh, uh, a lot of possibilities to to combine. Um, uh, products um, with uh, uh, innovative uh, uh, designs. So I wish you all a very successful and interesting session uh, uh, where you will learn what the, op the opportunities that Worth is going to offer you and uh, um, in order to create value for you and value for the society. Thank you very much. Back to worth. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gustavo, for the kind introduction. So now I'm happy to introduce my colleague, Corina Moyal, who is the World Project Coordinator and who is happy to present the World Project in the open call. So, Corina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope you hear, listen to me properly now. Uh, thank you, Gustavo, for your kind introduction to the leather sector. Uh, you mentioned that uh, there's a lot of possibilities of innovating in your sector, and uh, we are uh, very happy to introduce you uh, a way to uh, go ahead with your innovations, uh, providing uh, the support, uh, counting with the support of a program uh, funded by the European Commission, which is uh, worth. I'm going to share my screen. And and introduce you to this interesting project. 
First of all, I would like to give you some words about uh, why the European Commission has decided to create uh, this, uh, this program. Uh, overall, it's because the SMEs play a crucial role to reach the strategic objectives of Europe. But sometimes uh, their, competitive, their competitiveness is somehow hampered by the low exploitation of the international pro, uh, opportunities. So in this context, the program for the competitiveness of the small and medium-sized enterprises, the COSME program, has as main objective the support, uh, the support of the development and strength of the competitiveness of the European SMEs as innovation drivers. WORD uh, creates and supports transnational collaborations between designers, creative people, manufacturing enterprises, crafters and makers, and technology firms looking to develop design-driven and innovative products. This is the second edition of the program, which ran from 2017 to 2021. And uh, we are open now from the, for the first call, which is linked to the new European Bauhaus, including its three core values, beautiful, sustainable, and inclusive. Let me show you some figures and facts about uh, the first edition of WORD. Throughout the uh, four years, 152 partnership projects have benefited from an incubation program to develop new ideas. During these four years, 2,600 partners registered to our platform, which is not only a platform for application, but also serves as a networking platform. You can use the, the world pla uh, platform to look for partners to work with because we have a very huge database of designers, of uh, companies, of tech providers that could be used by you for your own business. We received 462 applications uh, in three calls for proposals involving 970 eight applicants from 36 countries. That means that the participation has been very, very high. Among the uh, most participating countries, we have the Netherlands, Italy, Spain, Germany, and United Kingdom. So the biggest countries uh, in Europe. But also, let me put uh, strength on the fact that many little countries have participated and uh, this is a, a way to strengthen the, the the opportunities for the designers for the creatives in these uh, uh, countries but also the participation of smes that uh, have benefited from the uh, from the worth uh, project to uh, strengthen their businesses we are very proud uh, that to say that WORTH led to the construction of sustainable partnerships. You, I mentioned that uh, this is a partnership uh, project, that, that means that participants uh, not, cannot participate alone, but they need to participate in partnership with another partner. This is one of the main features of this program. And although it could be seem something difficult at the beginning, Afterwards, uh, this uh, fact has been demonstrated to be very successful and partners are very, very happy to collaborate with another partner to, to establish synergies, to establish these collaborations. And uh, six of every 10 partners from the first edition continue working together, which is very, um, very good and demonstrates how successful work has been in triggering the formation of long-lasting business collaborations, not only for work, but for the continuation of the project and other uh, collaborations. Uh, also, another important feature of the program is the, the, the coaching, the coaching program. During the, 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 the four years, four, uh, 40 hours of training have been uh, developed with 35 online modules and seminars, which can be uh, reached not only by the awarded partnerships, but 
for everybody, for all the attendants that would need the, the modules, so the training offered in these free seminars. Also, we have uh, organized eight on site uh, workshops that help the 150 to selected partners, partnerships to acquire uh, or further develop capacities. Important also to underline the organization of three B2B matchmaking events, one per round, which intended to connect work partnerships with trade partners and other professionals. 70% of our work partnerships have reached the market, which is an important thing, an important figure to remark because uh, this is a program uh, which may name uh, is uh, whose main aim is to to help the partnerships to bring their products to the market. Uh, also, we have organized three internal networking activities under the format of working groups to uh, facilitate uh, the professional connections among the partnerships, among the partners, as well as the exchange of knowledge and good practices. So the winning partners have the opportunity to connect with other partners in order to establish new connections. And 120 sectoral events in 26 EU and COSME associated countries. Which are the benefits of World 2? Uh, in World 2, we are going to support 200 partnerships, uh, we, which will be selected in three calls for proposals. That means that we have increased the number of partnerships uh, uh, selected. And the selected partnerships will be offered uh, by an incubation program, with, uh, which consists of the presence in media, advertisements, and social networks. We give uh, very, very in, uh, importance to this uh, uh, dissemination of the partnerships as part of our uh, incubation package. Also, financial funding of 10,000 euros in general, but uh, some projects could benefit up to 20,000 euros. Those partnerships that uh, have a specific needs of the, that uh, demonstrate a very high outstanding and the allocation of this uh, amount will be given by the steering board, not by the partners uh, that uh, ask for a specific amount. This will uh, be allocated by the steering board according to some specific criteria, which are transparent and are published in our uh, website under the section Help Desk. Also a tailored made mentoring program. That means that one uh, specific mentor will be allocated to uh, each partnership according to the specific needs and gaps in order to help them during the 10 months of work uh, to successfully bring up to uh, the mark, uh, to, to success the, pro the project. Also the participation in two international events to showcase the developed products. Uh, in the last edition, we have uh, participated in the Fori Salone Milano Design Week and in the Dutch Design Week. Uh, Afterwards, uh, for the last uh, two calls due to the pandemic, so we have also participated in these events, but online. Uh, we hope that uh, the, the pandemic uh, will uh, decrease and uh, for the next uh, uh, three calls, we could again participate in the, in the on-site events. Also it may ask you about something about this international event. We are going to establish a program with the partnerships in order to detect which are the needs in terms of professional links for each partner and develop dedicated meetings with investors, provide them with tools to develop a crowdfunding campaign and so on. Uh, because I have mentioned that our main aim is to bring the products to the market. And the visibility of participants profile in the World Gallery. I mentioned that this is a networking platform and you can register and you have a lot of tools to uh, navigate through the path to the, through the platform and uh, find your suitable alley. Who can participate? 
So le, the legal entities forming the consortium could include SMEs under the EU definition, but also self-employed professionals. That, they, that means that the creatives, designers that are not uh, a company, but self-employed could participate. And there's no need to be legally established to, uh, to submit a proposal. The only requirement is that once you are selected and you are going to sign an agreement with ITES to receive the funding, you need to be uh, legally established because you need to submit us an invoice. Uh, also, private non-profit and private for-profit organizations are welcome, and other entities such as universities, research centers, design labs, if it is uh, justified as relevant to the partnership project. This is a project dedicated mainly to designers and SMEs. Uh, universities, research centers, etc., have uh, their own uh, programs under the Horizon uh, 2020, Horizon Europe, and uh, several programs. But if it is necessary for the consortium, uh, these partnerships, of course, are allowed to participate. The applications must be submitted by partnerships consisting of minimum two and maximum three eligible partners. The partnerships must be transnational. That means that the members must come from at least two different EU or cosmic associated countries or United Kingdom. Participants cannot participate alone. As I mentioned, this is an, a collaboration program. Uh, each partners will nominate the lead applicant and the lead applicant can only be an SME or a self-employed professional. At least two of the following roles must be represented in the partnerships. Designer creative, this is mandatory for each eligible uh, partnership because you, you, you know that this is a design driven program. So we need to have the design included in, the, in, the, in your idea. A manufacturer, crafter, maker, or a technology developer, technology supplier, or owner. And very important, the partnerships must address solutions for the eligible lifestyle industry sectors. That means fashion and textile, footwear, leather and fur, furniture and home decoration, jewelry and accessories. One partner can participate in several submitted applications, but uh, the partner can only be involved in one selected partnership proposal per goal. If you participate with more than one proposal, it's okay for us, but in the end, the steering board will design only one of your partnership proposals. Uh, what happens with the already awarded uh, partnerships under, under the first edition of work? They can participate in the second edition, but only if they are project ideas completely different from the one awarded in the previous school, because we need to have more innovation, more uh, innovative ideas. We don't want to repeat the same ideas. So uh, this is the reason behind this. And the technology provider, owner or supplier must own or have the right to freely use the relevant technologies to be applied. That means that you don't need to include a new technology, of course, you can uh, make your proposal or build your proposal out of other uh, innovations such as the new process and new materials and so on. But in case you use uh, a new technology, you need to be uh, to have the right to use uh, to freely use it. How to form a partnership? So there are several ways. Of course, if you have an idea and already have a partner to work with, you can register both partners and go ahead. But what happens if you have an idea, but you do not, you do not know a partner in another country? You can, first of all, use the World Gallery to find your partner. So once you register, you can enter uh, with your profile and password and uh, use the tools, the searching tools that has that the platform has to look for a partner by country, by profile, by hashtags, uh, to have uh, several possibilities. But in case you still don't find a partner, uh, the consortium can help you uh, to find the right one. You have, we have a dedicated pension 
to uh, meet with you, look for, uh, for at your necessities and propose some partner to work with. You can uh, send us an email at this uh, address, uh, projects uh, at worldparkproject.eu, and uh, we will uh, put in touch with you to help to find the partner. And uh, what about the application process? This is very simple. It's a three steps uh, process. First of all, you need to register uh, individually all the partners from your consortium. The link uh, to the platform is uh, on the website. You can enter there and you will easily find it. Uh, my colleague Sikri will uh, guide you in, in the website afterwards and you, you will see that it's very easy. The step two, two is to find the partner. I, I already mentioned the possibilities. And the step three is the submission of the proposal. The leader must log in and submit the application package. Uh, the application package consists of uh, the application form. You have all the documents in our help desk in the World uh, website. You can also include the dossier, including your sketches, drawings, uh, or other information you may consider relevant for the evaluators to, to evaluate your proposal, and also a preliminary business plan. I mean a preliminary because we don't need to make a, to make a complete business plan. This is an issue that uh, will be developed through the throughout the project duration with the help of your mentor. Also, you can include the portfolio of the applicants uh, if you consider it relevant for the evaluators to know your previous work and the video story. The video story is very important because uh, sometimes the evaluators uh, understand better your idea when you tell them the, uh, by speaking rather than, by the, than writing. This is a, a very helpful, to, uh, helpful tool for them to evaluate. You don't need to make, of course, a professional video story. You can record it with your mobile phone. And you have some guidelines of how to build this, uh, this video and which information is useful to include it uh, also in the help desk section of the website. And that's all from my side, uh, only to recommend you to apply. We have extended the deadline of, uh, of the call. Uh, the call will be open until the 16th February so that uh, you could have time to find a partner and uh, apply. And also let me know you that uh, we are going to attend Linea Pele in February. Uh, although it's a week later uh, after the call closures, you know that we have two more uh, calls uh, that will be open next year. And uh, we have a stand there. So we have some projects uh, presenting the, their projects in the, in the, in, in the forum the, uh, linea, of Linea Pele. So we highly recommend you if you have time, if you are there, visit us. We can comment deeper and uh, give you some uh, tips on how to how to apply, show you more projects and, and so on. So now um, I give the floor to my colleague Sikri to present you how to the, the platform works and give you some tips about the participation. Thank you very much. And afterwards, uh, we will have some uh, time to answer your questions. Okay, great. Thank you, Corina. In case you have any questions, you can leave it in the chat box or you can participate at the end of the session. We will have some uh, time slot for QA. Now I would like to share my screen to show you very quickly how to browse across the website of the project. This is the home page of the project. You can start the application process by clicking on register now. By clicking on register now, you will be 
directed to the applicant registration. The form is divided into two sections. The first one is to complete the basic uh, information, so uh, only contact details are asked at this stage, and then you will receive an automated notification to your email, where you uh, will be asked to validate your account. Then you will be ready to start with the second step of the registration process, where you will be asked for more information. So remember that by creating your profile in the registration platform, you will be visible in the World Gallery, which is the dedicated area where to find potential participants to work with. Also, I wanted to show you where you can find more relevant information about the project and its open goal. By clicking on the help desk area, you will find other uh, relevant pieces of documents, including the guide for applicants, the eligibility criteria, the award criteria, and some other guidelines. To learn about the application process and the three steps already mentioned by Corina, you can find this information by, by clicking on how to apply. Of course, in case you have uh, more questions during the application process, so we will be happy to assist. You can email us at helpdesk at worthproject.eu. And now, I would like to introduce two success stories, starting with the story told by Asa Adawad, who is a member of our creative community. Asa Adawad was part of the steering board of experts uh, taking care of the evaluations of the projects in the previous edition. He is a multidisciplinary artist working between uh, Lebanon and Spain. His handcrafted leather and metal pieces were first showcased by the likes of Thierry Mugla, Balenciaga, Madonna, Lady Gaga, Teatro Real, Custom Museum, Madrid, and numerous editorial appearances in Vogue. As Adawad's work is known to be artisan and vanguardist, respecting the quality and execution of every piece, designing luxury, leatherworks, industrial accessories, and jewelry. Join me in welcoming Asad Awad to this informative session. Asad, thank you for joining us today. Please, thank uh, you very let much. us. Yeah, we we will be happy to learn from your experience in the leather sector. So I, I have only one question for you. Yeah, <laughs> in your opinion, what are the biggest challenges encountered by manufacturers, crafters, and creatives operating in the leather sectors? When it comes to building a strong business collaborations and developing innovative solutions that contributes to more beautiful and sustainable living environments. From my experience, uh, being a, a mentor specifically in ITEC and um, in Worth Project, uh, actually we have three points. I will run a presentation. The presentation will have uh, a video at the beginning, then the presentation, then a showcase. Uh, let me just share. You can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay.
Leather, metal and wood. A trio existing in almost every bag. First they set the radio, and then the TV, and then the internet. I think we reached a certain point where taboo is not welcome anymore. So the extracted in my product comes naturally from deep inside. Exactly like a physician performing a surgery, an artisan has an endless number of tools and needs so many steps to perfectly craft a very simple luxury garment. When I design, I always recycle because it gives me the opportunity to change the function and aesthetic of the recycled material itself. I once did a full wearable collection made out of recycled metal strainers. perfect mix between the handmade and the machine made, meaning we cut by machine and you finish the garment by hand. This way, technology will be serving the craftsmanship. Me encanta la tortilla de patata, el café con leche, and at the same time, I love the Lebanese manouche with yogurt. Every day, we see more than 5,000 pictures. It enters our brain and gets out with our own reinterpretation. Frankly, I don't imagine my life without design. Crafting accessory in my first tiny workshop in Madrid and being able to collaborate with Lady Gaga, Madonna and Mugler is a dream coming true. My family are George Georgette, Eli and Tony. Suddenly my cousin dies and they gave me his name, Assad. Assad Awad might look like a long name, but it is actually written with four letters on the keyboard. Exactly like human, the bag had its own evolution. Because experience is everything, I would never reverse anything in my life. Black leather, long beard, and a tough character. But in the end, youth is pure, and we are all children from the inside. Okay, so this video uh, was specifically made to show the human part of a designer or a maker or an artisan, all the conflicts that you might see working, solving, uh, and the end piece that you would create. So uh, going back to the question, going back to the question, there's a sacred trio from what I learned teaching at uh, Worth, mentoring at Worth. There's a sacred trio between the designer, the maker or the artisan and the supplier of the raw material. The desire and all of this trio actually is perfect with the new European Bauhaus because the designer is the enriching side of the story. The artisan is the inclusive, the multicultural uh, artisan from any spot in Europe or the world. And the supplier is the sustainable part because the supplier controls both actually, because the, 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 the big responsibility uh, is the supplier's one because the, the raw material comes from there. So we're gonna slice this trio and talk about every part. So from the designer's end, 
Imagine that I want to do a tote bag and I'm a designer. So the easiest way to communicate with the maker is to be a maker myself. So uh, it's what made uh, Leonardo da Vinci so famous because he wasn't a designer, he wasn't an architect, he wasn't a maker, he was all of it at the same time. So if I'm being able to do a bag, do the pattern, try it out, and have the actual bag on my table, then I would go to the maker, to the supply, uh, to the uh, to the factory, and tell them I want exactly like this bag. And from there, the artisan would add on with his know-how. So my product should be innovative because we need more innovative product and last fast fashion. It should be timeless or not, depending on the material we use. So if we use leather. We will be. We will. We will. We will approach the timeless. The timeless point because leather is a has like a ten or twenty years of lifetime. Uh, do I want hardware in my in my bag, or I want it full leather? What is the unique point of it? What is the unique side of my bag? Uh, is my bag a, a, an answer for a, for a problem? Because we all know that design is a problem and it's solution. So did I solve this? Uh, what is the material I'm gonna use? Is it sustainable in the way it's made? Is it a collection? So is it one bag? Is it a collection of bags? Is it one bag and then followed by the collection of bags? Why would I need worth? Uh, so we had projects that needed worth, uh, worth project to, to be able to work on one specific part, like uh, a shoe part, a shoe sole, to make this shoe sole more, uh, more sustainable. So when they cut the sole, they would use the waste to do another sole, the raw material and cut again. And so there won't be waste. Uh, inside of this, uh, this slide, I would like to, Talk a little bit about the culture. How can we be? How can we touch the the uh, the cultural side, designing? So imagine I have an original idea that happened when I saw a designer of a basket, a basket artisan doing the basket, and I said, "Oh, if I mix this technique with leather, I would have a beautiful new new creation." So I would approach. The artisan, which is the partner, which might be the partner in this in this case, uh, we do a brainstorming. We talk about his or her technique. I spend the day in her uh, in her workshop, knowing, uh, getting to know what is the how uh, what is the uh, her savoir faire. How does she do the thing? And then I explain where did I reach in my designs, uh, and then we try to blend both in techniques and in design aesthetically and functionally and how the how the how the piece is crafted so in the end i can have a leather bag that is mixed with the natural fiber of the basket art uh, artisan so we are mixing in fact art and culture in one item from the artisan point of view uh, as a designer presenting to work project I would like to explain one essential point. So I'm an artist, I'm, I'm a designer that want to pick uh, his partner for the project. So I need to approach a partner that is open-minded to be able to communicate, to explain my project and to have his know-how as an added value on my project. So we don't want a partnership that does not work. Uh, is this partner, uh, offering quality product, not only the first piece, but the full collection. Uh, is it a sustainable way uh, to produce? Uh, does, does this partner has the technology to cut my patterns uh, by laser, by, by CNC, uh, to be able to mount it? Because whatever we do, the machine cutting is way more precise and way more uh, speedy than the hand cutting. Uh, is it a fair trade uh, in the own company, being a, a, an artisan or a company that has many artisans? 
do they work in a in a chain work system which i personally do not like because i i I don't like anyone to be doing uh, leather handles for his own uh, his his whole life. I mean, a chain work is like you have uh, all the luxury companies used to do that, and now they're changing to more uh, more like uh, be, uh, instead of doing one piece of a bag, they go switching, doing many pieces of the bag because it's torturing for the for the for the artisan. Does this? partner have the, the production strength to deliver and the delivery date. Uh, a point about sustainability. Okay, I just want to give a quick example. If I want to design a tote bag, a real leather tote bag, uh, which practically in terms of uh, craftsmanship, it might cost like a PU synthetic bag. So in terms of production, the cost of producing the bag might cost the same, but in the case of the real leather that uh, would consume uh, 110 kg of carbon footprint, in the case of PU, it consumes 14.4, but the 14.4, which is way lower, would not last a year, while a real leather bag can last 10 years and the more we use it, the more it's, it gets the patina on the leather, we get attached to it. The main problem with the fast fashion now is that you buy a bag and in a couple of months, you start getting attached to it and then you lose it because the material don't last. Uh, so real leather, just a, an extra point. Uh, Imagine we don't do the leather. So when, when we slaughter the cow, we use the, the meat and then we throw away the hide. A landfill decomposed hide would anyway cost us 94 kg in carbon footprint. So we'd rather do it real leather, use it for 10 years or 20 years, then shred it, then recycle it into other uh, into composite panels or other, uh, other usage. And the supply, uh, from the supplier end, we have a variety of leather. We have natural leather, which is the, the genuine leather, the real leather. We have, a, um, we have the vegan leather. We have the synthetic leather. So we need to look at the quality. We need to look, uh, we need to look at the dur durability, the process, how it is made. Uh, uh, does it involve chemicals? Is it naturally uh, tanned? Uh, when when it comes to leather, it's luxurious because it can it can stand all the all the uh, all the time we want. It can be next to us for years. Uh, we have tanning new tanning techniques that Gustavo talked about, which is which is a, a byproduct to a byproduct. Uh, the leather is a byproduct because we use its milk, its meat, and then instead of throwing away the hide we transform it into leather. So now there are new techniques that of tanning the byproduct with a byproduct, which is olive, uh, olive leaves. Uh, by, by, by producing and doing leather, we are reducing 270 million tons of landfill waste per year. So we're actually helping by producing, by producing leather. And the leather is recyclable in many terms. The leather, if we have a leather jacket, if it gets uh, damaged, we can fix it. The leather can be fixed, can be glued again, can be stitched again. Uh, when, whenever we want, we can recycle the leather, shredding it and turning it into, into composite panels that can be used in, in the shoe industry, in, in many industries. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about where does the leather come from? 65% of the leather comes from the cows, 15% comes from sheep, pigs are 11% and goats are 9%. And the other like uh, Amazonian fish or deer or uh, any other animal are very minimal, like 0.2%. Like
Uh, the vegan leather, we have a, every year a wider variety of vegan leather. There are vegan leather from banana peel, uh, ban banana peel from um, apple, from cactus, from mushroom. And until now, uh, they are almost like mixed with a reinforcement of PU and PVC just to make it harder and so they would last more. Uh, Okay, uh, this is an example from last year, a project that I was mentoring. I remember very well, uh, I was on the table and the project came and Billy put the samples on the table and I wasn't being able to uh, uh, stop touching this leather because it's the most tactile thing I have ever touched. Uh, it's the inside of the uh, intestines of the cow. So the intestine of the cow usually uh, is thrown away. In some countries, is used in the cuisine. Some other countries, they just cut it and transform it into dog food. So there's a big waste in that area. And Billy just took this, uh, this product and transformed it into leather doing many trials of uh, many tanning trials to 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 reach this is the new the the newly post slaughtery leather this is when it's tanned and dyed this is a close up of the texture uh, the first time i touched it it was like as if you printed 3d on top of a fiber so it's beautiful. You, you won't be able to stop touching it. This is another, uh, every layer of the stomach has a different texture. This is the leather transformed into a beautiful bag. This is another example. Being a stomach has the luxury to be a, a very, very uh, organic. This was used in international exhibition as a, as a, as a poop. So in the end, whatever the project is, uh, we will be helping every candidate to reach the perfect partner and to reach the maximum of the, the, the whatever the project, wherever the project can reach. So uh, that's it. That's all. Thank you. Zikri? Yes. Thank you for the insightful success story, Asad, and for tackling such key aspects when it comes to developing innovative leather solutions. Those are the type of projects that matter to work indeed. Thank you for that. So now I'm happy to introduce another success story convened by Tatiana Di Federico, who developed a project change in the first edition of WORD. Um, Tatiana, I just wanted to, to double check if you are still with us. Yeah, 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 I'm here. Yeah. I'm sorry, but uh, we we have another appointment. Yeah. Now, but uh, thank you for inviting us. Um, I, we have a short video to show you. Um, Cartier is an ethical fashion enterprise with social purposes based in the colorful hills of Bologna. Our headquarters is an abandoned paper factory. We chose this site because it symbolizes the new life that we are giving to a place which has been depopulated in recent decades. 
Care was born with the aim of proposing concrete solutions to some of the challenges of our time. Economic integration of migrants, the rediscovery of the quality of men in Italy, the repopulation of a former industrial area, and environmentally friendly fashion production. A different future for the fashion world is possible. A future where equality and sustainability represent the main values of the product. Cartiera employs people who are facing economic hardship, especially migrants and asylum seekers, and it invests in their professional development. Working together with expert craftsmen, they have the opportunity to develop their skills and become specialists in the leather sector. Using residual items from the production chain of high fashion brands, Cartiera produces leather goods with a low environmental impact. My name is Tatiana Di Federico and I am president of Cartiera. We strongly believe that this is a place for change. Cartiera is a place where new possibilities are created and that's why we call the project presented within the World Program Change. The idea of change was the inspiration for the entire project. Knowing that work is one of the most powerful levers to generate positive changes in the lives of disadvantaged people. Thanks to our collaboration with these ideas, and more specifically with Sujan Varma, the designer who created the capsule collection, we were able to turn the idea of change into real life prototypes. The collaboration between Cartier and Suidias created a team with complementary skills, able to implement a successful project. Using wonderful fabrics from Burkina Faso and Mali, this project gave us the chance to consolidate our partnership with the Ethical Fashion Initiative, a United Nations program that works to create a network of different ethical fashion cooperatives around the world. Cartiera, let's make new stories together. Okay. Thank you, Tatana. Tatiana. Thank you, uh, Ziki. Um, yes, our video speaks about uh, what is Cartiera and what we did. Uh, with the uh, with your project with the work project um i can have just a few words about uh, the value for us in taking part uh, in this project um the work project allowed the cartiera to benefit of an acceleration process at european level which on one hand favored an increased know-how about communication management activities and the construction of a business plan. And on the other hand, it has greatly expanded our network, especially thanks to the networking events promoted by the World Project. And personally, the project was an excellent experience to further develop my management competencies giving me the opportunity to better understand my company and the internal dynamics. So for us, it was a great opportunity and we did this kind of project when we were, when we were a, a startup, a newborn startup, because our initiative started in 2017, and we took part uh, to the World Project in 2018. So we were very young. Today, Cartiera is bigger, is a social cooperative, uh, not a startup. And we worked with important brands as Fendi, Lamborghini, uh, Gucci, DHL and other partners and we are growing and so uh, we hope um, all the best uh, for the new participants. Great.
Fantastic, Tatiana. Thank you for sharing your your success story, right? And your experience in the previous edition of Word. Yeah, your project is a, is definitely a good example of how a social innovation and social inclusion a, can be a values tackled by leather solutions. So again, yeah. thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Bye. 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 So now it's time for the Q&A. We already have some questions here in the chat box. I will go through them. And Corina, the World Project Coordinator, will answer your questions. In case you have more questions, so feel free to, to ask now. Corina, I have some questions here. Mm -hmm. The participant, Daniel, is asking about the international events. As I understand, he wants to know uh, how the decision is made when it comes to participating in, in either one or a specific international event. Okay, yes. Um... Normally, what we are, uh, what we do is to check the needs of all the partnerships, because uh, we are only um, to participate in one event for all the partners. So, because we have a limited budget, of course. So, uh, we try to to bring all the projects to the most suitable event according to the needs of each partner. So, for the first call. We selected the land design group because uh, it was a general event uh, with big, uh, big attendance, everybody is there. And uh, we checked with the partners and they decided uh, that this event was very profitable, profitable for them. So, so we decided uh, to bring them to this uh, event. Uh, the event was very profitable to both and were very profitable because uh, they, we organized specific meetings with the press, with uh, investors of the event, and also they have the opportunity to benefit from our company process before the event to take the maximum advantage to the event. For the online events, uh, they, the partnerships were very happy also because uh, their profile is still on the website and they are still uh, receiving contacts from them. But basically, the participation on events has the as premises that we are not only go to with all the partners to one event because of uh, budgetary restrictions. Yeah. Another question related to the participation in the event, since the selected participants most participate in two international events, uh, he is asking if they if it's mandatory to participate in the ones organized by WORD or if they can uh, showcase their design solutions in other events. Well, of course, you can showcase your products whenever, whenever you want. So the the events uh, included in the in the package are the ones organized by us because we are going to pay for the booth and for the entries and so on. But we have, fortunately, we have no budget enough to cover the needs of uh, two hundred partners in two hundred different events. You know that this is very expensive, and uh, we are we, we are not in a position to cover one booth in, in a specific uh, event. But of course, you are free to to showcase your products in whatever you want. Okay, thank you. There is another question. This is related to the looms granted by the core project. Maybe 10,000 
is not enough for the development of the project. Uh, Corina, maybe if you can talk more about the allocation, the, the, the allocation of different loans soon. Um, uh, yes, uh, we know perfectly that uh, 10,000 euros for some uh, projects uh, uh, is not enough to cover the whole project, but this is a help. This is a financial help uh, to uh, the partners uh, to, to, to start doing this project. It's like a, uh, it's like a kind of uh, amount that uh, will help you to start doing a project that will, uh, will be done in any case. Uh, uh, it's like all the projects in, funded by Europe, it's uh, supposed to have a co-funding by you and by the European Commission. For some others, uh, as according to our experience, it's, it's, it's enough, depending on the, the scope of your projects, the technologies, the materials are, you're going to use. Uh, for this uh, round, uh, we are going to allocate bigger amounts, but for some specific projects, not for all the projects and the amount, the, Maybe if we if we fund seventy projects, only seven will be benefited from two thousand uh, for twenty thousand euros. This is also uh, again due to budgetary restrictions, and the decision will be taken by the steering board because uh, we know that if we ask for the partners to uh, ask for an amount, everybody is going to ask for twenty thousand euros. I know. So uh, the European Commission has decided to establish a well-defined allocation criteria and partnerships meet in these allocation criteria because they are outstanding. Uh, they, they, the steering board will uh, decide uh, if they deserve or not these amounts for their correct development. Okay. Daniel, I'm leaving a link here in the chat box where you can find more information about the allocation of different loop zones, right? And the criteria used by the steering board expert during the evaluation process. How many months? Also, I take advantage of your question, right? To invite you to join us in the tutorial session we are organizing on, on Wednesday, the 26th of January, where we will talk more about the specific details about how to go through the application for and how to prepare and submit a successful application. Another question, yeah, 10 megabytes may be not enough, right? Yeah, definitely. In the application platform, uh, you will find an option to insert a link either to Vimeo or YouTube. Yeah, this is definitely the, the best way to upload your video. We have another question. Mm. Can a partnership be started by a tanner as well, Corina? Yes, of course, a tanner, if uh, provided that this is, it is an SME, uh, of course, you can you can participate. In the first round, do we have uh, some partnerships uh, where a tanner forms part of, uh, of the partnership? And uh, well, I, I don't think uh, they were the leaders, but of course, uh, if, if you want, you are an, if you are an SME, you can. Uh, start uh, leading the project of course and the, you will be very welcome of, on, we are happy to to help you in the application proposal uh, if you write to the projects uh, at projects dot you or project dot you so <laughs> Yes. yes, we have a question or a comment indeed from Asad. If the tanning process is innovative and doesn't exist, I think it will be possible the tanner. Is... Oh, that was the, the answer for the question, my opinion. 
Mm -hmm. the tanning. Yes. Yeah. So yes, the tanner is, is, is creating a new process of tanning. It's like creating a. It's like a creating a new material. So yes, it's possible, I guess. Yes, yes. definitely. I, I think, think we have gone through all the questions we had. Yeah. Let Daniel me know check about it. Daniel Apostolos. Seems that okay, uh, yeah. About that the, was very clear. Yeah. What about the duration of the selected partnerships, Corina? The, the partnerships will uh, will uh, uh, take uh, ten months uh, to complete their project. As of the signature of the yes, of agreements, right? Yes, of course. Once selected, we will uh, communicate the results, and then uh, you will start the formalization process with our lawyer uh, partner, Anna Maria Stein. Uh, she will guide you to the, to the draft of the partnership and the draft grant agreement. This is very important because at this moment you will uh, establish uh, the model where you are going to, to work, uh, the IPR issues, the exploitation issues, uh, uh, the, also the distribution of the lump sum between the different uh, partners. Uh, so th this is very important to take a time to think about the, the partnership agreement and to make a good partnership uh, agreement in order not to have uh, any travel during the 10 months duration. So after the signature of the agreements, your partnership will start and you will have uh, 10 months uh, to, to, to work with. Also, we will uh, put in touch with you to, to figure out your needs about the coaching program, which coach uh, will be the best for you to help uh, and then also the coaching program will will start. Okay, another question related to the project duration. Uh, can a partnership project end earlier than the 10 months? Yes, in a specific cases, we have uh, had some uh, projects that uh, finish uh, earlier. It's not common because uh, 10 months is not too much to, to work and also the coaching program should uh, be developed. Bear in mind that this is not a project only for receiving the money and that's all. This is an incubation program and we need time to, to, to proceed with this incubation program. So that means we are not, we don't want projects that only wants the money. And you take the money, make the, your project and that's all, no. We want a super, to give you support through the coaching program, through, through the networking events, through the training program, through the exhibitions, the professional links, and this takes time. So you can finish your product earlier, but you need to adjust to the different uh, dates we propose for the networking activities, for the coaching program to be completed, uh, and so on. So this is an incubation program, and an acceleration program. Okay, great. Thank you for the answers, Corina. Since there are no more questions now, I want to take advantage of this session to encourage you to apply to this open call. So remember that the process is divided into three steps very simple steps. The first one is to register on the platform. The second one is to find a partner to work with. And then you will be ready to prepare and submit a joint project application through the platform. Yeah. Also, in case you have more questions, we will be happy to assist you during the registration and the application process. So don't hesitate to contact us at Word Project at at helpdesk at wordproject.eu. And if there are no more questions today, I want to thank once again, uh, Gustavo Gonzalez, uh, who is the 
a representative of Cotance. Thank you for hosting this informative session today for the leather sector. Also, thank you for all the speakers uh, who can be the success stories, very, very insightful, your story, Asad and Tatiana. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much uh, to you and to all the to all the participants. Um, I think it's um, it's very interesting. To, some of the people are multipliers, so this info this info session is going to to be probably uh, uh, reaching a, a much larger audience. So I thank you all for conveying this information also to your affiliates and and to and to provide this uh, uh, insight into the work project uh, to all the possible. Um, interested parties. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye, everyone, and have a fantastic weekend. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.